Cooper back to throw it, looking to his right. He's going to dump it off in that direction. He's got a man, 10, 5. Spalding trying to get in the end zone, and the ball comes loose in the end zone and goes out of the end zone. Central Michigan's two-game win streak was snapped on Saturday as the Chippewas fell in Toledo, 31-17. We'll show you the highlights of the game next on Chippewa Rewind. Joining us on Chippewa Rewind, a tough loss for Central Michigan, 31 to 17 on Saturday. I'm Adam Jackson. He's your head coach, John Bonamigo, and coach. Not the result that you were hoping for, but what did you think of the game on Saturday? Well, it's an exciting game for the first half, and uh, absolutely not the result that we had worked for and hoped for. But you know, that's that's football. Sometimes you get the breaks and and the bounces, and sometimes you don't. Uh, I was proud of the effort that our players put in. I was proud of the preparation that they put in during the week, but it's a game of execution, and when you have penalties and turnovers, it's hard to win games, especially against a good opponent like Toledo, and we knew that going in. Uh, again, there's a lot of things that took place that I think we could be very proud of, and then, you know, there's a lot of plays that, well, we just still need, need to keep working and improving. I know last week you gave Toledo a lot of credit, said that they were a very good team, top to bottom. Did you think it was more about what they did well or what you guys didn't do well? I think it's a combination of both. You know, they're obviously a very talented team, but you know, so are we. We've got some really good players on our team. Again, it's about consistency of execution and uh, on both sides of the ball in the kicking game. You know, when you get into those tight games like that, you know, everything gets magnified. And I talk to our team all the time about, you know, learning to win is one thing, but before you learn how to win as a team, you have to learn how to not lose. So, you know, understanding our responsibilities, our keys, our reactions, but even more importantly, taking care of the football and avoiding penalties when they're avoidable. There's uh, times in the game when, you know, penalties happen, you know, through aggressive plays, and, and those are... Those are a little easier to, to stomach, but when you get lined up off sides or um, you, know, you have too many people in the game, uh, those are the ones that are you know, inexcusable. Yeah, you mentioned that off sides. Really, that was the only time Toledo was able to drive on you on that first drive of the first half. Outside of that, though, you had to be pleased with your defense through the first 30 minutes. What did you see from them that they did so well? I think they've done what they've always done. They played very hard. We played gap sound. I thought Malik Fountain played a really good game inside. You know, and we're going back to the penalty things, there was three penalties that extended drives that ended up resulting in Toledo scores. So a lot of these wounds are self-inflicted. The thing that we talk about uh, in our locker room and in our meeting room is that no one beats us unless we beat ourselves. And, you know, that's the attitude that I want our team to have. Again, we're disappointed in the loss. It's one game. We still have a lot to play for. Uh, we owe it to our seniors to finish the season out the right way. Our goal here is always going to be to play for and win a MAC championship. That's the, that's what we're here for. That's what we're built for. We're built to win championships, and that never changes. But you know, uh, at this point in time, with where we're at and what's left on the schedule, you know, mathematically we're still in it. But you know, realistically, I'm going to always tell the truth. I'm going to tell the guys that, you know, and I have told them that, you know, we can't depend on somebody else. But what we can do is continue to prepare and play hard and uh, win these next four games. And it starts with the one that we have here at home in Kelly Shorts next week against Kent. All right, well, let's take a look at the game on Saturday. Central Michigan falling 31 to 17, a pretty uneventful offensive first half. They get a field goal, Toledo does, to go up three to nothing. And then Jack Sheldon, I think when he came over from Australia, he didn't think he'd ever be throwing the ball, but. <laughs> He is here. Well, you know, this is a, a fake that we've had in for, uh, for quite some time. Uh, and we just felt like this was the right look, right opponent. Uh, and we dialed it up and uh, it worked. And, uh, you know, Nate Bristenfast was a tight end in high school. So he was the right guy to catch the ball. He did a great job. Jack did a really nice job of selling the, the rollout punt and then 
you know, threw a nice little touch pass out in the air. Felt like, uh, felt like the hang time on that pass was probably equal to some of his better punts. So I was really glad when it came down and Nate caught it. But, uh, you know, you're, as a head coach or a special teams coordinator, you're, you're, your heart's always kind of in, in your throat when you make that call in the fourth down like that. But we knew we wanted to go th into this game and be aggressive. And we talked about that, that we were going to leave everything out there. We we're going to do everything we could to win the game. And, um, you know, that was a well-executed well fake. So Jack gets it over to Brisson fast. His first catch of the year, Jack's first throw. And it gets you some nice momentum late in that first half. And then Corey Willis just continues to fight for yardage here, gets 20 yards. You know, Corey's got the heart the size of a basketball. And, you know, we do a nice job here with the boot. He does a great job of separating, catching the ball. But he gets about 10 to 12 yards of yards after contact there, just rumbling and bumbling and fighting for extra yards. And it's, uh, you know, I think that play kind of demonstrates the fight in our football team. And Corey's certainly a big part of that. A couple of plays later from the 17, this was the big play. Spalding gets it right down towards the goal line and ends up fumbling. Yeah, he's open in the flat, gets the ball with a quick throw from Cooper and has time to turn up. And, you know, he's he's trying to make a play. He's going for the end zone there. He extends the ball and it comes out um, and has correctly ruled a, a touchback when it uh, goes out of bounds in the end zone. So, again, we talk about a game of inches. Uh, there is no one on our team that works harder uh, that's tougher uh, and that it means more to than, than Devin Spaulding. You know, it's unfortunate, but again, you know, we have to learn from it. We did it. We did it to ourselves. And, you know, the consequences are that we, uh, we lose possession of the ball right there when we had a chance to score and go ahead in the ball game. Toledo runs out the clock, so it's three to nothing at the half. That seemed to be kind of a momentum changing play in the locker room at the break. Did you feel like your team was down from that player? No, not up? at all. I think the opposite. I think we went into halftime very confident. You know, we went into the, the, uh, in the halftime, you know, with the message being, hey, we're down three to nothing. We really should be up seven nothing because the field goal that they got got set up off of a offsides penalty when, when we stopped them on third down. So instead of a change of possession play, punt, you know, we end up extending the drive and they end up finishing it off with the field goal. So, you know, those are the things that we're talking about in terms of, you know, the, the corrections that we need to make. And we're, we're not far off, but it, it's unfortunate fortunate that uh, some of those mistakes cost us a game. Three to nothing at the break. The second half coming up, Chippewas fight back. We'll take a look at those highlights when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. The game is bigger than quick hands, breakaways, or finger rolls. It's bigger than layouts, sellouts, and shooting the lights out. It's bigger than cannons, bells, and wagon wheels in any stadium, field, or school. Because when you play the game with the integrity of the sport, with character, honor, and heart, the game is bigger than just a game. It's a foundation for life. Back to throw it, looking left, steps up, run out of time, spins out of trouble. 20, he's going to run it. 15, 10, down to the 5, plowing forward, and... Touchdown. Touchdown, Cooper Rush. Toledo leading 3 to nothing at the break, and then the Rockets get the football first, John, and they go right down the field and get a touchdown here. Yeah, they put together a pretty nice drive here. This was a, a play where actually I thought Amari played the route actually very well, it was in good position. It's a... You know, it's a back shoulder throw, just a very difficult route to defend when you're manned up like that. And, you know, give them credit. It was a great throw and catch. And, you know, Mari was, you know, like I said, was in pretty good position to make the play and just arms weren't long enough. What is the best way to try and defend that back shoulder throw? Well, the, you know, to get a good reroute at the beginning of the, at the, uh, off the line of scrimmage and, and try to disrupt the passer. You know, obviously there we didn't get enough pressure on him. He had time to really rear back and, and make a good throw. But again, he was in good enough position that the only throw that was going to beat him was, was the one that was made. And again, credit to their quarterback for making the great throw and the receiver finishing the route the proper way. 
Makes it 10 to nothing Toledo. Chippewas get the football right back and Cooper makes a mistake and throws an interception. Yeah, I think he forced this one in here. It sailed on him a little bit. He's trying to hit Mark Chat you know, on, the, on the basic cross route there. And the safety is able to, to jump the route and get in front of it for a pick. And, you know, we turned the ball over on our end of the field. No place really good for a turnover, but you definitely want to, don't want to give it to them when they're already in field goal range. And so they're able to get the ball in the end zone again. Makes it 17 to nothing after they capitalize on the interception. But again, this is an opportunity where your team, they could have given up if they wanted to down 17. They didn't. Next drive is big. You hit Tyler Conklin for 35 yards. This was a, a really nice throw and catch by Cooper and Tyler. Uh, Tyler on the crossing route. The key thing here is Cooper gets in the ball in time where he can turn it up and makes ex extra yards. And, you know, Ty's such a big, strong guy. You know, he gets the ball in the open field. He not only runs really well, but, you know, he's a big man to try to drag down. And I just thought, you know, him wearing number 21 was very deserving this week. And, and he played like it. Ty really played a, an excellent game all the way around. He certainly did. Six catches for 74 yards for Tyler. And he was able to get in the end zone as well, wearing Derek Nash's number 21. Corey Willis, he's been big all year long. Another good catch here. Always big. You know, Corey always seems to come up with a, a play or two a game. Um, there's a good job here off of the play action. He's got the sail route. Coop does a great job of laying it out there. He's able to catch the ball, keep both fit, feet in bounds, and uh, that's another big play for us. Six more catches for Corey Willis for 73 yards. And how about the scramble ability of Cooper Rush? Nice spin move, and he gets into the end zone. You know, Cooper's, uh, again, you talk about a big man in the open field. Uh, he feels the pressure, steps up in the pocket, avoids the rush, and then decides to, you know, finish the job himself. And uh, just a great gutsy play, uh, showing his heart and determination to get the ball in the end zone for the score. Showed elusiveness with the spin and then the power at the goal line. The Chippewas are on the board, 17 to seven late in the third quarter. And then here's a nice run from Devin Spaulding. Again, this was well blocked at the point of attack. You know, uh, Bocce doing a good job there, leading through on the linebacker. Spaulding's able to hit this downhill and, and breaks outside and, and uh, just an excellent run and a great play call and very well executed. Brian Evie coming off a couple of misses that he would have liked to have back last week, but he nails this one to put you guys within seven. Yeah, this was a good job by Brian. The protection's good, the snap's good. We used Clay Walders act this week on, on the short snaps. He's a little bit bigger body and it, it seemed to shore things up a lot more. And, and uh, you know, I was glad to see Brian get out of that slump. And, you know, he, I think he's back on track and we expect big things for him down the stretch. You say anything different to him at practice this week or just let him be? We let him be. You know, I think he's uh, got a really good handle on his technique. And, um, you know, there's so much that goes into that. A lot of times the kicker takes the blame, but it, really the battery, the snap, the hold of kick is, you know, it, it's uh, each part of that or each component of that is very important. You know, the snapper making an accurate snap, uh, getting the laces in a position where um, the holder doesn't have to turn it or minimal turn. And then, you know, the holder making the catch, turning the ball if it needs to, and, and really making sure that it gets on the proper spot with the right lean that the kicker likes. So uh, it's something that requires a lot of repetition. It's very mundane. But it's critical that each component of that is uh, done precisely every single time or it will affect the flight of the kick. And so, uh, you know, I think Brian's got a lot of confidence in this current setup and we'll keep, uh, keep getting better. Fourth make of the year for Brian pulls the Chippewas to within seven, 17 to 10 late in the third. And then they go on a drive and get another touchdown to make it 24-10. Yeah, this Cody Thompson had a heck of a game against us. Uh, I think he caught four touchdowns. Here he, uh, you see him on an in-breaking route against Sean Bunting. You know, Sean, again, freshman playing out there in our nickel package, has done a really good job all year long. Um, you know, gets beat on this play, but, you know, I expect him to bounce back, learn from it. And uh, again, hats off to Toledo. It was a very well-executed play. 
24 to 10, Chippewa is trailing. You elect to go for it here on fourth down, and Tyler Conklin nearly comes up with an impressive catch. Yeah, this was a, you know one of those decisions, and you look at the you know the amount of time that was left in the game, and and uh, the amount of points that we needed to generate uh, to give them the ball again was would seem like it was uh, you know wasn't in our best interest. So we decided to take a shot. You know, Cooper gets flushed out of the pocket there, um, makes a good throw, was a little bit high. You know, Ty does a great job of going up, trying to get hands on it, but it's just not able to finish it. And again, you know, I know I'm redundant in saying so, but it is a game of inches. Certainly is the final score, 31 to 17. Chippewas and Rockets both end up adding one more touchdown late. Coach, a tough loss against a pretty good team at home. Your final thoughts on that one on Saturday? Again, it's it's difficult anyway, anytime you lose, especially in our program with the standard that we set for ourselves. And really that's been set uh, far before I was even on campus here. The bar is very, very high and, and we understand that and our players understand that. But we still have a lot of football left to play. Uh, some important games down the stretch here. Uh, we can do some things here. Uh, that haven't been done in a long time and we just got to take it one week at a time and start to string together some victories and you know we plan to do that this week when we play our last Saturday home game of the year here at Kelly Shorts against the Golden Flashes of Kent State. Last time the Chippewas won more than seven games was in 2009. Central Michigan will go for that sixth win this Saturday at home against Kent State. We'll take a peek at the Golden Flashes when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do on campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and much more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Central Michigan now looks to become bowl eligible. They're back at home. The Chippewas take on Kent State this week at Kelly Shorts. Coach, what can you tell us about the Golden Flashes? Well, a team always that's really good defensively. Uh, Paul Haynes and I are friends. We go back to our days in Jacksonville. We both marry Jacksonville girls. Uh, you know, myself, Mary and Paulette, that's where I met her when I was with the, with the Jaguars. So uh, Paul, with his background on defense, you know, always feels a really good defensive team. Offensively, I remember last year them being very balanced. Uh, they were able to run the ball effectively and, and through the air. So we're expecting a, a, a good matchup. Uh, I know they're, they're struggling a little bit right now, um, but uh, you know we never look past anybody or take anything for granted. So we'll prepare hard uh, you know, as if they were 8-0. You know, no. So um, we want to make sure that we put in a good showing and that we're prepared and we go out and play as hard as we possibly can and get, get this all-important sixth win. You know, I have to ask you this, it's every week, but what do you have to do to beat them on Saturday? <laughs> Got to take care of the football, can't have foolish penalties. Uh, I think this is a team where it's going to be important for us to have some balance and run and pass. Um, and defensively, we've got to make sure we continue to swarm to the football, uh, gang tackle, and, you know, let's try to get a turnover here or there. And, you know, special teams-wise, we're going to have to be sound in every area, just like, uh, you know, just like we were last week, I thought we did a good job on special teams the last two games. So need to continue that and, um, you know, find a way to win. Two weeks on the road. Nice to be back at home in front of the fans this Ab week, too. Absolutely. It uh, should be a great day. Uh, looking forward to seeing that student section filled up uh, and uh, really counting on everybody's support. Our, our fans have been outstanding this year. You've really made a huge di difference. Uh, our team feeds off of that. We appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you again this Saturday. All right, it's a 12 o'clock start. Central Michigan against Kent State. Chippewa is looking for that all-important sixth win. We'll see you at Kelly Shorts on Saturday afternoon. He's Coach John Bonamigo. I'm Adam Jaxa. Have a terrific week, and fire up chips.